Hello, this is Mike, the creator of Insidious. In this video I'll take you through the modulation controls. For Insidious I wanted to create something simple and obvious. I just wanted to present the CPU based features that we used on the C64, so that's what you get. On each channel you have one LFO and one envelope each for the pitch and PWM. And also one of each on the filter, and they all operate in exactly the same way. As usual, I will go to the init sound, and I'll start with the pitch modulation. I'll change the sound to triangle, so that we don't go mad listening to a dry sawtooth wave. Now to switch between the LFO and envelope, you click this button here. This is in the pitch section. So this is the LFO, the low frequency oscillator as opposed to the high frequency oscillators that produce the actual tones. This is the LFO waveform. Using the up and down arrows you can change the waveform type. We start with triangle, we've got sine, square, random, saw down and saw up. And we're back to triangle. You won't hear them do anything at the moment because the depth and frequency are both set to zero. If the depth is zero, the LFO effectively doesn't exist, doesn't do anything. If the frequency is zero, the LFO is basically frozen in time. So I'll turn them up and you'll hear the LFO in action. I'm going to say the LFO is frozen in time. It really is, because I can... can hear some LFO on the sound, providing some vibrato. I can also assign the depth parameter to the modulation wheel on my keyboard. So if I go here and go to pitch LFO depth, Going back to the LFO controls, as I said before, the depth is in semitones, but the waveform itself is bipolar. That means it goes above and below zero. So if I set the depth to two, just switch off the modulation wheel. If I set that to two, that means that the pitch will go two semitones above and two semitones below the note that you're playing. Now the left and right arrows here are just the phase of the waveform. Still not doing anything there because it's only useful when key sync is switched on. So if I switch on key sync, it will restart the LFO every time it receives a note. So whereas before, if I leave that off, whenever I play a new note, the LFO just continues going regardless. But if I switch key sync on, The LFO restarts to this value every time it receives a new note. So if I press the left or right arrows, you can see the wave move left or right, and so the start position changes. So if I put it here, so it's at plus one, it starts at maximum, which will be the number of semitones specified in a depth parameter. So that's starting two semitones above the note I'm playing. So I'm playing a C, it's starting on a D and dropping down. Let's just put that on six. That means it'll go six above and six below, which is one octave. There we are. If I move the waveform over here, then it will start at minus one. So it'll start six semitones below the note I play. The fade parameter here lets you fade in the depth of the LFO over time. The value is in seconds, and it's the length of time it'll take for the LFO to reach the maximum depth. 
So I set that to one second, that will slowly fade in over one second. You can hear exactly that working in Rob Hubbard's lead sound for Mega Apocalypse, which is right there. Now the envelope. Like with any usual envelope, this defines a modulation path that is followed over time. The modulation envelopes in Insidious are a little bit unusual in that they have a bipolar sustain value. Now that means it can be positive or negative and it allows a bit more control than you usually get. Just like with the LFO, a depth of zero means that nothing happens. So I'll put that right up to 24, which means the maximum value will be 24 semitones or two octaves. Now as I put a little bit of decay on it, so it starts at 24 notes above and drops to zero. But I can set the sustain level to be minus one and that will pull it down to 24 notes below. So that's going 48 notes in total in a very short period of time. Now you can hear that when I let go of the key, it jumps back up to the, to the root note that I'm playing. That's because the release is set to zero. So as soon as I let go, it, it jumps back instantly in zero seconds. So if I turn the release up, you can hear that it heads up towards the zero point. But if I put it all the way up, you can see this little infinity symbol that appears. And also you can see that the, the envelope itself changes to show that now when I let go, it will hold the last note. So I can use that, well, you can all hear it as it is now. We've basically got a, a kick drum there. Turn the pitch down a bit, make it a bit faster. If I change the amplitude envelope, turn the depth down a bit. Basically, a kick drum. If we want to make that a little bit more clicky, what I'll do is I'll stick in. A little bit of very fast noise on the second channel. So, uh, just a note that you, obviously, as you saw, I can adjust the root the uh, pitch using the controls here. Switch off the circuit noise there to make it a little bit cleaner. Switching on the test bit there, you might have seen that in another video. That will make the sound a little bit more consistent because of the way it resets the waveforms on every note. Now for the PWM. Let me reset that. Now modulation only affects the pulse wave and any combined waves that use pulse. So I'll switch to pulse. First of all, the center control here sets the, the base width of the, the pulse, the juice cycle. I can actually assign that to the modulation wheel as well if I wanted, PWM center, there we are. Aside from that, PWM and pitch envelopes are exactly the same, except that the depth only goes up to one. It's still bipolar, it goes from here to one, and then to minus one. So we'll put the frequency up a little bit.
And that's about it. I mean, that's pretty much all of the controls there for the modulation. Now, as I said at the beginning, they all operate in exactly the same way in the filter. We've got exactly the same set of controls. We've got an LFO and an envelope that have all exactly the same values. I can give you a little quick demonstration there. The one slight difference in the filter modulation is that we also have a track button. What the track button does is it adjusts the cutoff relative to the note that you're playing. So if I uh, just switch off the LFO there and the envelope. So if I switch off the track button, then No matter what note I play, the filter cutoff will stay the same. But if I switch it on, notice that it jumps up and down with the note that I'm playing. That just keeps the frequencies of the sound that you're playing consistent throughout the whole range. And that's it. That's your modulation. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.